السلام علیکم خواتین و حضرات وسیم احسن ویلکم سی ٹو دا ورچوئل یونیورسٹی آف پاکستان دی کورس از دا برانڈ مینجمنٹ اینڈ وی آر گیٹنگ ان ٹو لیکچر نمبر تھرٹی تھری ان دا پریویس لیکچر آئی واز ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دا گارڈنگ پرنسپلس آف ورک دا کمیونیکیشن اینڈ جسٹ ٹو گیو یو ری کیپ دی تھری فنڈامنٹل پرنسپلس آر دیٹ communication strategy or strategies could must fit into the overall brand vision, brand strategies and uh, the corporate strategies. Principle number two is that um, communication strategy is basically driven by the brand picture and brand positioning. And guiding principle number three is that um, all the communication strategies have got to be integrated. so that they carry the same message and uh, they create a punch which is desired in order to reach our target market. It was in relation to this guiding principle number three that I was talking about different methods which lead us toward integrating the various tools that we have at our disposal to make our strategy effective. And... Uh, One of the methods that I was talking about toward the end of the previous lecture was appropriations for budget. Budget making is something that you're going to be involved into when you are working as the brand manager. Whatever the budgets and the further subdivisions are, what is important is that all the tools of communication have got to fit into the brand-based strategies, meaning whether it is advertising or promotions and different forms of promotions, whatever tools that you have must fit into your overall brand strategies. Having talked about the guiding principles and um, the forces which really drive strategy making, let us now start talking about all the tools that you have at your disposal, the one by one. Advertising. Advertising is the, the most important, the most visible, and the most dynamic tool of communication. It is something which attracts everybody. It is captivating because of its basic nature of uh, emotionalizing facts. A good ad turns facts into feelings, good positive feelings, which appeal to our emotions. And while they appeal to our emotions, they really actuate us into taking an action or buying. And that is the basic responsibility of a good ad. So in other words, a good ad is more about sales than about stirring emotions. We can put it like this, that um, emotionalizing facts is a means toward the end, which is to achieve sales. So any campaign or any advertising for that matter, which cannot really generate sales, meaning the desired level of sales, is not a good ad. There are many ads which are very attractive and uh, very memorable, but then at the same time, they're not the ones which really generate the desired level of sales. And in order for an ad, what it takes to achieve that end, which is what we call sales, we have to look into how we make good ads and how we execute those ads. So let us now get to talk about uh, the two major uh, the components of uh, this tool uh, that we call advertising. The one is developing advertising and the other is executing advertising. Developing advertising is uh, the very strategic. just like uh, the, all the elements uh, within the ambit of uh, the brand management. And advertising has got to stem from uh, the brand's picture and brand's positioning. And you will recall from uh, the previous lecture that uh, the brand's picture relates with uh, the present and uh, the brand's positioning relates with the future. So in other words, the gap between the picture and the positioning is a reflection of the sales volume that we are wanting to achieve. I will explain this uh, the phenomenon uh, in uh, 
different words. You already have developed the brand picture and you are very clear about the associations with which the brand is going to generate in the minds of the consumers. And if you succeed in developing the associations with which you think brand should be developing, then you have achieved the brand's positioning in the minds of the consumers. Now the question is the journey between the brand picture and achievement of the brand's positioning is a little long. And uh, the phase is that uh, you have to cross from one point to the other, the meaning from the brand's picture to brand's positioning comprise of um, awareness, retention, meaning comprehension, and uh, then intention to buy, and then the final action to buy. So in other words, you've got to be able to understand where you really stand in terms of uh, the response effects on part of the customers. If you are dealing with um, a new brand, then of course the foremost objective is going to be creation of awareness. And if you are dealing with um, an established brand, you've got to be very clear about the level of uh, the response effect with which needs your attention and therefore needs to be fortified with the help of advertising. So this is what I mean by the gap between the brand's picture and brand's positioning. Once you really have uh, achieved all those associations with which um, need to be developed in the minds of the consumers, the position is achieved and the advertising has done its job. In relation to the phrases or the response effects, advertising or communication for that matter it has to go through, I did talk about uh, with a couple of examples in the previous lecture and uh, I hope very much that uh, with the help of those examples, the relationship of uh, the advertising and um, the response effects uh, should be very clear in your minds. And therefore, uh, you shouldn't really have any doubts in your mind as to what should be the strategic intent of your advertising when you are going to craft your strategy. Now, the question is, what is the starting point when you have undertaken an advertising campaign? Any advertising always starts with a copy. This is a concept which you already are aware of. The reason I'm going to talk about copy is that we have to look at the strategic side so in other words, if you're out to develop the copy in order to start the process of advertising, we've got to be clear about the strategic side of copy making and copy generation. It is the most essential part of advertising and like you already know, it is that part which deals with all that information which has to be communicated to your target market through advertising. So in other words, the space that you have to yourself in terms of the print ads, may that be the papers, may that be magazines, may that be any other means of the print, the media, the space is not limitless. If you are dealing with a television commercial, you call copy storyboard, and storyboard basically is you know, what copy is for the print media. The essence remains the same. Now, in terms of uh, the storyboard or uh, for that matter, television commercial, again, you, not, you do not have an uh, infinite amount of time. Whatever you're going to talk about has got to be talked about very briefly. And um, within that, uh, the brief commercial, you've got to convey the message that you are the wanting to convey. The question is, what is it that you have to convey? And I think we have developed our understanding by now that what really is to be communicated is again your brand promise, brand contract, 
and brand's positioning. So a copy or a storyboard is a reflection of all these strategic elements. The copy strategy from that point of view is uh, an extension and elaboration of uh, the brand's marketing strategy into the area of advertising or for that matter copy making. You have the marketing strategy and you also have the marketing strategy statement in the which is just about two, two or three sentences and which explains what your strategy is in order to reach certain goals meaning strategic goals that you're wanting to achieve. The copy strategy is an elaboration of that in terms of copy making. It is simple. And you talk about the ways and means that you are going to develop that copy in order to be able to achieve the same objectives, which basically are the brand's objectives. So copy strategy, from that point of view, is uh, a long-term document which um, states the net impression that you would want your consumers to have about your brand. The question which really comes into our mind is what does that net impression consist of? Well, the net impression consists of the basic selling idea or the end result the brand is promising to the consumer. And the end result which constitutes the principal reason for the consumer to buy your brand in preference to competition. I will rephrase the whole thing all over again. A copy strategy is a long-term document which states the net impression that you are wanting to create in the minds of your consumers. And that net impression consists of the basic selling idea or the end result that you really want your consumers to have in order for them to make the final decision for your brand in preference to competition. So in other words, if you succeed in creating that net impression, you're successful. And if you do not succeed in creating that impression, you're not successful. And therefore, you've got to get back to the hierarchy of uh, customer response effects and uh, analyze and dissect the whole situation in relation to those response effects. Where do you stand? Where did you go wrong? If uh, you thought that uh, you had to make um, an advertising campaign uh, based on retention, were you right in doing so? and so on and so forth. To give you a few examples of uh, the net impression that uh, you uh, would like to create while uh, putting together an advertising campaign, let's talk about a soap which uh, you are marketing. You can position the soap from so many different angles. It could be mild, it could be having uh, the superior cleansing properties, giving you softer skin, and it could be something medicated. So these are the kinds of net impressions which you would like to create through your advertising. And as a point of departure, you've got to be clear about the net impression that you are going to create, which is the basic selling idea. So for a soap, it is extra mildness, and maybe that is uh, intended for babies. For a soap, it could be cleansing properties. It could be intended for a female segment. For a soap, it could be total cleanliness and uh, medicated properties, health reasons, vigor. And it could be intended for uh, the workers, people who work in the factories, who work the sweat out, and after working the whole day, they have to take a shower and they need to have a soap, which really does a neat job. So depending upon the target market and depending upon the brand position and depending upon the promise with which you're going to deliver, 
you create the, the basic selling idea and based on that basic selling idea or that basic content that you come up with your advertising campaign this is the starting point meaning the statement which creates the net impression copy strategy also is a statement of principal characteristics of uh, the product and therefore talks about the reasons why the promise is deliverable you have talked about i mean you have considered already extra mildness or uh, superior cleansing properties or uh, the medicated properties or for that matter for a detergent you already have uh, taken into account the the washing properties it gives you a cleaner wash now you have to talk about that in ways which are convincing for your consumers who must understand that the promise you're making is deliverable so you have to tell them why it is deliverable well for uh, the soap you know which um, is extra mild you have to talk about the ingredient which creates that mildness if you are selling a toothpaste you have to talk about the the fluoride content or maybe clove oil or something like that which gives cleaner teeth and which takes care of cavities and so on and so forth meaning the the basic selling idea has got to be supplemented by the content or by that ingredient which makes the promise deliverable for a detergent which gives a cleaner wash you have to talk about uh, the extra uh, strength of chlorine or uh, uh, bleaching or uh, the uh, disinfecting agent which uh, makes your detergent uh, that much more effective that uh, the, your consumers uh, must prefer uh, your brand to competition. So this statement uh, which uh, deals with uh, the why the promise is deliverable is as much important as the first one which states the basic selling idea about the net impression that you want to create. These two statements have got to be supplemented by another statement which is about the character and the personality of the brand, the meaning the persona. Because we are out there striving to build for the brand something which has to be taken the way it is intended. And therefore, in, in the context of advertising, in this like, the part of the strategy, the, you are dealing with like, the, what advertising experts call the mood atmosphere or the tone of voice, the one and the same thing of advertising. Again, to give you the example of uh, a soap, you know, which is meant for workers, like, you have to build a character uh, through your advertising which really reflects your soap as something very wholesome, as something which is honest, the honest in the sense that it really does the job which you are promising and uh, that promise is delivered. You already have taken into account uh, what you are going to talk about in terms of uh, selling the point that the promise is deliverable. So when your campaign is kicked off, whether it is through uh, the print medium or through the television medium, meaning through the total media, you've got to uh, create the brand personality in the way it was created and it was intended. You have created the identity. Now, for them to take it the way that you have created, it is a question of image. And image is going to be created in their mind only if the, the promise is deliverable and it is delivered and uh, the people really think that whatever you're talking about through your communication appeals to their common sense and appeals to them in a way that uh, they really take it very seriously. It is a simple plain logic but uh, it is something which has to be very coherent and uh, very cohesive and all the elements they've got to get fit into the one place and converge at one particular point. Only then your advertising campaign is going to be effective. To give you another example of the brand persona, let us talk about a tea brand. The 
advertising it may talk about uh, vitality and vigor because that's the kind of uh, the brand personality the company is uh, the wanting to create and uh, the meaning the wanting it's uh, the consumers to have in the mind because uh, if the company really succeeds in uh, creating that impression uh, within their minds it really has made a home in there and uh, it uh, has successfully achieved the uh, positioning for the brand and uh, the chances are that uh, the sales are going to be positive so the company decides to get the talk from the standpoint of uh, the vitality and vigor and also from leadership in advertising you do not talk about these things you give these impressions and that's the, the beauty of advertising meaning the beauty of that communication and the elements the, the basic uh, ideas that, that you have to consider before you uh, put the campaign together I already have talked about and uh, I hope that you will not have any difficulty in uh, understanding what uh, it takes to uh, come up with uh, an advertising campaign of course it is not something which is going to be created by you to begin with it is a learning process but uh, the, the basics which you must which you must understand are the ones which I just talked about and uh, the question which comes to the mind now is whose responsibility is it to develop the copy uh, which is so very strategic and uh, the elements of which uh, they depend on three different statements that you have to make while you are uh, putting your strategy together talking about the responsibility and effectiveness of uh, the copy or the copy strategy it basically is the responsibility of the ad agency meaning the effectiveness of the copy strategy but then at the same time the making sure that uh, the copy strategy is effective is the responsibility of brand managers it is very interesting if effectiveness of uh, the strategy uh, is the responsibility of the ad agency to ensure that the ad is effective is the responsibility of brand managers I repeat so in other words there's got to be some fundamentals and certain guidelines which guide us to see to it that um, the strategy which is developed by the ad agency is effective let us now get to talk about those uh, the guidelines and those factors which we really have to consider to make sure that whose responsibility is it and uh, what are the factors that we have to look into to make sure that uh, that responsibility by the ad agency is uh, executed in the most effective form first of all you have to define the marketing problem while you're talking about your strategy meaning when you're talking about the strategy statements which I talked in three different parts that you have to support those with the help of marketing problem now you may support those as the starting point of the total strategy statement and let me tell you that this kind of uh, strategy statement consists of a couple of pages and you may also call it an outline so do not be confused between two different terminologies the strategy statement or strategy outline so in this particular context we are talking about something which is going to be a little comprehensive you define the marketing problem and by definition of the marketing problem what I mean is that you talk about the need and you talk about how you plan to fulfill that need and you talk about the product which you have come up with the product that you have come up with carries certain promises and uh, the set of promises forms one particular contract and uh, why you think that uh, the contract is deliverable and these are the points which you have to talk when you define your market and you define your market one by one point by point so that it becomes very clear to the reader of your strategy statement what you really are up to and what your plans are all that has gone so far into this strategy statement will sum up in the form of the position which you intend 
occupying in the minds of the consumers. So, you also talk about the positioning statement. Now, this statement is going to be just about two sentences and uh, it is going to be kind of culmination of all the, the marketing uh, definition points that you have talked about so far. So, in other words, what you're doing is that you are giving your reader a complete breakup and a complete uh, dissection of the market situation for them to fully understand your plans and then come up with a campaign which is very effective. Good ad agencies could also do the homework. Well, as a matter of fact, all of them do the homework, but the good ones do extra homework. How they do that, I'll talk about that. But the starting point is that you have to define the, your the marketing problem and to the, then develop your copy strategy accordingly so that the ad agency the fully understands the, what you want. And it is here that the interaction the, between you and the ad agency is going to be of paramount importance. It is a very, very productive process because the agency is going to give you their viewpoint, which is going to be very incisive and which is going to be based on the varied experience which the agency has gained by working with so many different clients and by working into so many different situations. At your end, you are the expert of your brand because you have created it and you have defined the marketing problem and therefore your perspectives when converge at um, a common point should create something very effective. So the agency is going to create something very effective and it is your responsibility to see to it that it really is effective, meaning it is very much in line with your objectives and very much compatible with the strategy which you have set in place. The, the second point is uh, that once you have done all that, that you have to gain uh, the management approval in order to start executing or in order to start uh, the developing the timetable for execution. Management approval is going to give you a lot of confidence into what you have done so far and um, you now are all set to start working on the, the program which deals with the tactics and executions and so on and so forth. Another uh, the guideline which you must have um, in consideration when gauging the, the effectiveness of uh, the advertising campaign is that you have to ensure that the agency is working on longer range experimental copies in view of the evolution that you envisage. You should not really have any difficulty in understanding this statement because uh, evolution is something which I talked about in detail in my lectures about um, the brand associations and uh, the brand promise and positioning and all that. And uh, you know very well that uh, you've got to have uh, all the innovations uh, in mind which uh, you will be carrying out which you will be creating you know, from time to time in order to adapt your brand to the changing needs of your consumers in the marketplace. Not only that you have to bring about those changes in relation to the changing needs, you also need to do all that in order to stay ahead of competition. And you would like to have some kind of a competitive advantage by creating something uh, from time to time or by adding some extra benefits from time to time which uh, really give your brand a competitive advantage. And there are certain things which are uh, very obvious when you start uh, with uh, the one particular stage in the life of a brand and you know uh, what is going to come one year down the line or you know, two years down the line and things like that. Uh, when you already know that, and the ad agency also is fully in the picture, you certainly talk about those possibilities. And you talk about the process of evolution, which is, in a way, around the corner. And you've got to start working today for something which is going to come like six months or 12 months down the lane. And that is what I meant by advertising agency 
coming up with uh, the alternatives and coming up with uh, a few variations of uh, the, the copy uh, the strategy which uh, you are going to make use of okay, in coming days, months and years. Because talking about um, the strategy statement and talking about uh, the, the basics okay, all over again, okay, whenever there's a need for okay, bringing about a little change, it's time consuming and um, it is uh, a, a waste of uh, the creative energies. It is good on part of the agencies and it is good on your part to make that sure that agencies do have uh, the few uh, longer range experimental copies and uh, you keep uh, working with those you keep uh, testing those with the head and there uh, just to see which one fits best with uh, your emerging needs the fourth guideline is that uh, you have to develop an understanding of uh, the basic principles of good copy so as to assess and evaluate the copy submissions very effectively. Now this is the, the final step. You are uh, the talking with the ad agency, you are looking at uh, the, the campaign which they have come up with and the fact is that the agency would like you to be very critical because uh, they would like to have a critique uh, on your part of the campaign that they have come up with. And therefore, you've got to be very knowledgeable of all the basic principles that you require in order to evaluate the work done by the agency so far. What you have to look into is that the campaign has got to be an attention-getting campaign, meaning it must create an attention-getting value. If you think the campaign is very well connected with the positioning and uh, they does talk about uh, the delivery of the promise and the contract and so on and so forth and the whole thing is done is so beautifully in, in, in precise terms uh, but it is it doesn't really have the punch and uh, it is not something which is um, immediately going to get attention of uh, the readers or the viewers then uh, you they must talk about that very candidly and openly with the agency. You must be uh, very clear about uh, another principle, which is the principle of relevance. You must be hearing a lot about uh, the brand being relevant or not being relevant. But what is relevance? Because we've got to be clear about that. Relevance is all about the relationship of your product with the target market. If you are selling cars and uh, you are selling an economy car, you rather they should be talking about the CNG feature and uh, mileage per liter and uh, things like that. Uh, you will not be talking about features uh, which basically relate a car uh, which is full of performance or which is a sports car. So that is uh, what is meant by relevance. Uh, you've got to be very relevant. I mean, the brand has got to be very relevant and uh, the campaign again has got to be very relevant with the brand and the target market. It has to use the kind of language which is in vogue and it has to make the use of those visuals and the colors and all those elements which are very much compatible with the target market. So that's what I mean by relevance. The other principle is uh, this campaign has got to be simple. The principle of simplicity. This is, I would say, is extremely important. You must be watching uh, the many ads on the television and uh, also the looking at ads in the print, or the medium, which are very creative. But then you see, they challenge your intelligence. And you start thinking about the ad, what the whole thing is all about. What is it that uh, the, the brand manager is uh, trying to convey? Or what is it that the brand is uh, the, talking about? It does look into my eyes the very forcefully, the, but then you see the, I do not seem to get uh, the basic idea. I don't think that kind of an ad is good. It may be very creative, but by simplicity, the, what is meant is that you should not be leaving too much to the imagination of your target market. It is very important. Keep it simple. 
That is, uh, that should be the principle in relation to so many different strategies. Complexity here is not the name of the game. Simplicity, straightforward things, with which really talk in very plain terms, and even an average consumer, well, I would go to the extent of saying that even a less than average consumer should be able to fully understand immediately what is it that you're trying to communicate. And another principle with which you have to consider is the visualization of story. This basically relates television and uh, the storyboard. So the visualization has got to be effective and uh, it's got to be very coherent. It's got to be based on uh, all the, uh, the principles that I've, got, that I've talked about so far, meaning the visualization should uh, get attention, uh, it should be relevant, and it should be based on simplicity. The last principle, the list is not exhaustive. Uh, there could be so many different principles, but generally speaking, I would say that the last principle that uh, you must consider is the integration of audio-visual elements to make sure that the copy has the competitive bite. It must bite into competition and it must be very effective. That's what I mean. So you have to integrate your audio things and the visual things so that whatever you're showing as the part of the total visualization is very coherent and it really has a punch. Another guideline is uh, that you evaluate the total effectiveness of the commercial and the basic selling idea without getting stuck into minor details. If you really involve yourself and uh, the minor details which already have been taken care of by the experts uh, at the agency end, then that may amount to utilizing your time in not the best possible creative way. That's what I would say. So do not really get stuck in uh, to something which is the minor, which is trivial. If the job is already done and it is done in um, an effective way, you should, be, you should be satisfied with that. It is not a the match between the brand managers and uh, the ad agency to see you know, who is more creative and you know, who can uh, be more critical of the whole strategic process. It is um, something uh, which is uh, complementary. You have to complement each other's efforts and um, it is a game which depends on convergence. You have to have convergent viewpoints and for that the principle of uh, Complementarity, so to say, is very important. Another rug of the principle is um, that um, you must analyze the copy related research before you give your final approval or OK to the campaign. It is in this connection that I was talking about together some agencies being very good and some agencies not being that good. Good agencies could also carry out could some level of market research at their own. Now that research may not be very comprehensive because the context is very different. They carry out that research just in order to make sure that whatever you have said as part of the strategy statement spread over like two or three pages by defining the market, by talking about the different parts of the statement the basic intent, the selling idea, and the promise, and the positioning, and uh, why the promise is deliverable, and with all those uh, related items that I talked about earlier. The agency would like to make sure that whatever you have talked about is really relevant, and if they have any divergent okay, the point of view, they will come back to you and talk about that very candidly, and uh, they will give you kind of a positive challenge to think about that. And uh, the basic idea there also is to complement and supplement the, your efforts just in order to come up with something which is very effective. So ad agency there fulfills its role of being very effective 
and it also lets you fulfill your role which is to make sure that the agency is effective in relation to this uh, the guiding principle there are a few more factors that uh, you must consider because you are at the final stage uh, discussing the whole campaign with uh, the agency and uh, therefore you must see to it no stone is left unturned uh, while you uh, finalize the whole thing uh, you've got to take into consideration the product its appearance the form and uh, the basic characteristics the meaning all these things have been taken into account or not uh, maybe there is an important side of uh, uh, the brand appearance uh, which does not uh, the show itself anywhere in the ad it does happen at times so you've got to uh, make sure that all those things uh, are present there now this is not to say that uh, every dimension of the product is to be uh, highlighted but what i'm saying is that uh, there are certain important features with which uh, anyone uh, later on in uh, retrospect that can point out uh, hey listen you just missed that very important point so these are a few of the elements of um, the, the product side which you have to consider while finalizing your campaign another thing which you must consider in relation to the, the market research carried out by the, the brand agency the competitive situation in nature of um, other brands in the field and uh, what they are offering to their consumers so in other words you've got to talk about the communication campaigns carried out by others if at all others are doing that exercise if uh, some of the players are not really advertising and they're doing something else and still are successful by your perspective in the marketplace you must look into that one more thing which you have to carry out while you finalize this thing you should carry out blind tests or what they call in the marketing research usage and attitude studies just in order to make sure uh, what is the usage of uh, your product and whether or not the usage uh, is uh, being perceived uh, by your customers the way uh, you have uh, created your product there have been situations in which uh, a brand was introduced with uh, the one set of uh, promises uh, but it ended up fulfilling a few other promises as well to the delight of uh, the, the brand managers and um, that gave the brand managers to come up with something new so what i'm saying is that you've got to be fully aware of uh, the usage of your product and the attitude which your consumers could have uh, toward your product and uh, that is something which comes your way uh, by way of carrying out uh, the marketing research at your end so what i'm saying is that uh, you've got to take into consideration a complete uh, marketing situation of uh, your brand uh, in terms of uh, the consumer behavior because uh, through advertising you're going to talk very very directly with your consumers and uh, any mistakes or any lapses there are going to be expensive and you may not be able to afford those so the campaign is uh, going to be created uh, given the overall marketing climate of uh, not only your brand but also competitive brands and you must also be very clear about what they are doing the ways of your actions so much for uh, the copy uh, the what it is and uh, whose responsibility is it now the next question which uh, comes to the mind is uh, what purpose does a copy uh, really serve it serves too many different purposes well the one of the basic uh, the purposes is that um, it puts everything on record and uh, the, your thoughts about uh, the marketing strategy and the brand strategy and the communication strategy are um, the very well structured and uh, it allows you to uh, make sure that uh, everything uh, uh, fits with uh, everything else and uh, all the, uh, the points of view uh, are convergent and uh, they create uh, the one single point which is the point of advertising campaign 
required for the brand. You might think that uh, being uh, one of the creators of uh, uh, the total campaign, uh, there is no need to have uh, these things in writing. And uh, therefore, uh, you may like to have a meeting with the ad agency and give the agency a go-ahead with uh, developing the campaign that has been the traditional way. And uh, there are companies that uh, indulge into this kind of a practice, but uh, one must never approve of that. You must try to come up with uh, a copy strategy, and uh, the copy strategy is uh, a very important document which maintains the continuity. And uh, that degree of continuity is important from uh, the point of view of uh, the evolution because uh, you always will know that uh, this is the way that you started off, and this is where you have reached, and this is where you want to go. And everything done by the company and by the agency is on record. It is something which really you know, gives uh, your brand a very you know, specific um, uh, character. And uh, that specific character emerges out of the consistency which uh, is exhibited in all the efforts undertaken by the marketing department and by the ad agency based on the copy strategy. So it uh, really leads uh, toward development of uh, a very specific image of the brand in the minds of the consumers. And uh, that is the final objective of uh, any uh, marketing uh, persons. The other uh, purpose which uh, uh, the copy strategy uh, fulfills is that uh, it uh, brings your brand uh, a certain level of uh, uh, distinctiveness and uh, a stature in the competitive market. And this distinctiveness and um, a good stature in the marketplace, again, it depends on that specific identity which you have been wanting to create. And uh, you have created that with the help of uh, all the elements about which you have been very, very consistent. And uh, you've been very consistent because you put everything down and uh, while going through that in a structured way, you succeeded in developing the rightmost relationships between different elements. Another purpose uh, it serves as, uh, it goes without saying, it uh, provides a lot of guidance to the ad agency about the limits within which the agency has to exercise its creative imagination, so to say. You must prescribe those limits. You are not to go outside of those limits. Because the agency might like to talk about something which you consider as a part of the coming developments, like you know, six months down the road or a year down the road. So you might like to hold on to those for the time being and uh, that is what is meant by prescribing limits. And uh, there are so many other things which uh, are to be considered while uh, you define these, these parameters. The, the point is that uh, it is the, the job of the copy to prescribe all that, uh, so, that the agent, so that the agency operates within those limits. Having talked about uh, these uh, the couple of purposes which uh, the copy strategy statement serves, but I would like to uh, bring this lecture to an end uh, because of the shortage of time. And uh, I will start talking about uh, this very concept in uh, the next lecture. Uh, Allah Hafiz, until then. Thank you very much.